I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bhutan to introduce an address by the head of government. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I have the honor and great privilege to introduce the pre-recorded video message from the Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lotte Tsering. Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies and Distinguished Delegates, I bring you warm greetings from His Majesty the King, Her Majesty the Queen and people of Bhutan, the land of gross national happiness. I begin with prayers for all the precious lives lost to the pandemic and I sincerely hope it comes to an end very soon. Congratulations, Your Excellency, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, for your presidentship. I assure you my full support as you assume this role at a very critical time. I also extend my gratitude to the 75th President for conducting the last session successfully. I take this opportunity to congratulate Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, on your re-election as the Secretary General of the United Nations. Nobody else can give us better hope and guidance to build back better from the pandemic than Your Excellency. I would also like to thank Your Excellency as well as Prime Minister Johnson for organizing the Leaders Roundtable on Climate Change five days ago. I spoke on behalf of 46 LDCs and we are already excited for a concrete result coming out of COP26 in the coming month. I would like to inform the August gathering that this year marks the 50th anniversary of Bhutan's membership to the UN. I was excited to attend the session and celebrate the milestones with you all, but the situation, as you all know, did not favor our physical participation. I thank everyone at the organization and all the members for enriching Bhutan's five decades of journey with the UN. We have come a long way. The fact that we are ready to graduate from LDC category is a clear indication that our efforts together have borne results. In addition to the UN and other partners, I thank the Government of India for your unconditional support all these years. We will continue to work closely with all the partners. Please allow me to talk a little more on this five decades journey. During the 50 years, the global poverty rate dropped from 52 to 9 percent. Life expectancy increased from 57 to almost 73 years. Bhutan's life expectancy at birth when we joined the UN in 1971 was just 40 years. The infant mortality rate decreased from 98 to 27 deaths per thousand live births. Similarly, the maternal mortality rate reduced from almost 400 to 200 deaths per 100,000 live births. The global literacy rate spiked from 67 to 86 percent. Without the coordinated global efforts through the UN platform, these progresses would not have been possible, or worse, many nations would have slid backwards. We are thankful that Bhutan has comparatively benefited more. In the last 50 years, Bhutan was blessed with three successive monarchs. It was His late Majesty, the third king, who worked tirelessly to install Bhutan into the UN. It was a historic move to establish global diplomacy and harness meaningful friendship. The far-sighted monarch led the country on the path of modernization with focus on modern education and progressive techniques in all spheres. When the fourth king took over soon after, he came in with the profound development philosophy of gross national happiness in as early as 1972. As the term GNH became more pronounced over the years, the world appreciated its relevance in a sustainable and more holistic format as opposed to the conventional GDP growth. I am happy to see this concept reflected in Secretary General's Our Common Agenda report, which I would like to touch upon a little later. The nation lived through major socio-economic development, championing on conservation efforts and strengthening global ties. The world will recall that during the peak of his reign, our fourth king stepped down to offer the throne to his son, and despite public resistance, he ushered in democratic transition. Destined to carry forward the legacy, Bhutan received a young and dynamic monarch, His Majesty the King, in 2006. We embarked on a new chapter. Just under two decades, 
people of Bhutan relished the reign of a king who was caring, learned, and astute. For generations, Bhutanese have always loved and revered our kings for the simple reason that our monarchs have been selfless for the nation and the people. But when COVID crisis unfolded, for Bhutan, we uncovered the true essence of our king's leadership. In him, we saw a son who assured that the old and vulnerable people were protected from the infection. In him, we saw a brother who traveled tirelessly throughout the country, uplifting the spirits of the frontliners and working alongside to protect the people. In His Majesty, we saw a parent who ensured the livelihoods of all those affected. The supports ranged from emotional to cash to food. But of all, we saw a noble being who led with science and wisdom on one hand and care and compassion on the other. Complementing all the noble efforts, Her Majesty the Queen showed personal care and initiated targeted interventions for the vulnerable sections of our society, with emphasis on mental health care and services in the country. When the world was dealing with the unprecedented plight that questioned our survival and livelihood daily, we sailed through with a minimum scratch from the pandemic. To update, we have seen only three COVID deaths and slightly over 2,500 cases so far, most of which were imported cases. Similarly, our vaccination coverage for 12-year-old and above is almost 80% as I speak today. Despite being resource constrained, we have not compromised on the quality and standards of COVID measures. Let me also mention that in the entire process of battling the pandemic, we ensured that the routine health services were delivered uninterrupted. Besides the regular vaccination program, we introduced HPV vaccines for the first time for all the boys and introduced flu shots for everyone amid the pandemic. We also launched a nationwide program on prevention and early detection of three most common cancers in Bhutan. Those are stomach, breast and cervical cancers. All these are aligned with the royal visions that is enshrined in our constitution that mandates a state to provide free health and education. His Majesty tells us that quality health and education made affordable and available to all are the biggest social levelers. Excellencies, just like the rest of the world, we are also looking at the pandemic as an opportunity to reset ourselves. The process to overhaul the civil service in consonance with the educational reform is underway. This is an unprecedented move. A nationwide rollout of the Bhutan Baccalaureate system is in progress following the successful trial of a formative education system in the last 10 years. Knowing that the path ahead is ICT driven, we have started digital initiatives with the ultimate goal for everyone in Bhutan to have a digital ID, a build up towards a big data system. Some other components are isotization of the schools, integrated taxation system, and electronic patient information management. On the other hand, our central bank is also piloting a project on digital Niltrum, Bhutan's currency, using blockchain technology. This is to adapt with the overall ICT transformation and harness technology of a 21st century Bhutan. Here, let me share that it is as though His Majesty saw the pandemic coming. In 2011, an extensive program that engaged citizens in a greater role of nation-building, calling it Desung, the Guardian of Peace, was started. It recharged the entire spirit of volunteerism, opened the world of opportunities for our young youth and injected sense of purpose and responsibility. Thousands of youth were involved in the program that created a mass societal shift. When the disease entered the country, the Desups in their orange uniform were helping guard the borders and entry points, ensuring everyone followed COVID-19 norms and even became part of the paramedics. This made a huge impact in efficient management of the pandemic. In another unique transformative step, the Desups were not part of COVID-19 related duties, were engaged in various skillings and reskilling programs across the nation. We know that the pandemic has forced many out of their jobs and their basic skills have become irrelevant. The ILO projects the global shortfall of jobs to be about 75 million this year and almost 23 million in the year 2022. 
This means unless we retool ourselves in keeping with the change, it will be difficult to find gainful employment and other opportunities for many of us. The ongoing youth engagement programs are the major steps to recover from the pandemic. While the effects may not be immediate, down the years, it would have been one of the main reasons for us to come out of the pandemic stronger. I feel when Bhutan's socio-economic transformation is reviewed later, our human development initiatives guided by our king will be the chapter that would have truly steered our nation into the 21st century. I am highly appreciative of the fact that the UN instruments are sensitive in picking this up. A special recognition was awarded to His Majesty for his leadership in advancing human development and well-being of Bhutanese people in 2019. Excellencies, we have immense lessons to draw from the pandemic, be it at national or global level. It has uncovered weaknesses and potentials of many nations and societies. But one lesson that we all must keep in mind is to be prepared with a more resilient system for future. The nomenclature of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 clearly indicates that there will be successive outbreaks of infectious diseases. It is a matter of when. I mean, nobody knows where SARS-CoV-3 is getting incubated. Therefore, our focus to build back better can never be good if you don't emphasize on health and quality of health care that must be easily accessible and affordable by everyone. We must also be mindful that immediate disease outbreak could be potentially from the pandemic-induced starvation and poverty. The pandemic has disrupted the already weak global food system. The Asia-Pacific region alone has almost 90 million people pushed back into extreme poverty in the aftermath of the current health crisis. I shared my concern during the UN Food System Summit the day before. Forget meeting the nutritional requirements. We are struggling to ensure adequate quantity. We must coordinate clear action plans to meet the immediate food shortage and long-term sustenance plan. In all the discussions on food security, one immediate challenge besides the pandemic is the climate change that has tested the resilience of the food we grow as well as the patience of the growers, which is why it is time for action now. On Bhutan's part, our visionary monarchs have maintained very high legal standards to safeguard our natural heritage. We have a dedicated chapter on environment in our constitution, which mandates 60% forest cover at all times to come and maintain intergenerational equity of our natural resources. We have more than half the country as protected areas. In order to safeguard the health of the protected areas and livelihood of the people living there, a royal charter was issued on an innovative funding mechanism called Bhutan for Life. We consider these as our eternal NDCs from Bhutan. If we mean what we say about working for the next generation, we must talk about tough climate loss as a component of NDCs from all other countries. Excellencies, despite being a small developing nation, as a GNH country, we always believed in global peace and harmony. Bhutan joined the peacekeeping fraternity in 2014. Since then, our involvement with UN peacekeeping has grown. We are now set to deploy a Bhutanese quick reaction force for the first time this year. I thank the UN for trusting us. I'm confident that our troops will live up to His Majesty's aspirations of serving with distinction and honor. In conclusion, we all know that COVID-19 will leave behind a different world. But what sort of a world we want lies in our hands. Mr. Secretary General's report titled Our Common Agenda offers all of us a good reference point for our collective progress. For this, I thank the Secretary General for coming out with this comprehensive and bold report on a greener and safer world. Please know that Bhutan is committed to working with other member states in advancing the ideas in the report. We have full confidence in your leadership to spearhead our common agenda. I want to share that it was almost as if the theme of the general debate was designed for Bhutan. It gave me an opportunity to reflect on our hopes as a nation. The pandemic brought out the very essence of gross national happiness. 
which seeks collective happiness and not just of oneself. It calls for us to act in unity. For Bhutan, everyone came forward to show solidarity to shield our country from the pandemic under His Majesty's leadership. If not, the small, resource-constrained country would have been crushed in the stampedes of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our unique system is beyond conventional definition of progress and prosperity. Our country's future is not just founded based on economic might and technological advancement, but on the integral values of human bonding and respect. And in this, His Majesty is our hope and is our future. I feel this is our biggest strength to come out of any adversities, just as we did this time. With prayers from Bhutan to the rest of the world, I would like to thank everyone for listening. I wish the 76th session of the UN General Assembly every success. Thank you and Tashidile. On behalf of the General Assembly, I would like to thank the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Bhutan for the statement just made. I now give the floor to the representative of Thailand to introduce an address by the head of government.